Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. A few days ago, I uploaded a video where I was tuning a Drake L4B linear amplifier. And in the process of tuning that amplifier and, and uh, getting it ready to go on the air, uh, connected to an antenna, I uh, was doing my best to tune it, but when I would turn the plate tune knob to the left, uh, it would slip just a bit. And by just a bit, maybe a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch through its rotation. And that became, well, a bit of a problem. And that no matter how hard I tried, it was slipping. And I really didn't notice it during the recording of the video but I sure did afterwards as I was playing the video and editing it. And um, I did my best to edit out um, those problems, but it shows up in the video and it confuses a lot of people. So I'd like to do that again. Um, talk about the, uh, the process of tuning, because it, it is really important if you incorrectly tune an amplifier, and right now there's a contest going on, and I, I'm tempted to set up a camera and record a few of the signals which are really broad really distorted and i know why so tuning an amplifier is crucial uh, so that you don't ruin others um, ability to get on the air because you're splattering 20 kilohertz wide also tubes are expensive and hard to get and they can be four five six seven eight hundred dollars for a set of tubes, sometimes even more. And if you shorten the life of that tube because you incorrectly um, tune the amplifier because you have too much grid current, what's going to happen is that um, the amplifier will eventually fail in a number of regards. Um, one of those might be that the uh, grid current of the tube is exceeded and it fails, it collapses, or you might arc some parts on the inside or put really high voltages where they don't belong and arc the plate load capacitor for example or the tank coil so what I'm going to do is tune an amplifier and go through the process again and I'll describe that uh, as I do it basically I'm going to start with uh, 10 watts 30 watts 60 watts <laughs> and then probably 100 watts and each time I'm going to advance the load control to a point beyond where I think it needs to be because I'd rather have too much loading than not enough. Not enough load control uh, will cause excessive grid current. The tube's generating RF. It goes through some plate blocking capacitors to keep voltage off the tank circuit and then from the tank circuit to the antenna. And I, So I want to couple the tube to the antenna by transforming that impedance at the tank circuit. Um, if I don't do that, then the power isn't going out to the antenna and as a result the tubes can, the tubes can be easily damaged and I, I don't want that to happen. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through the process uh, just so you know the tune and load controls um, rotate 180 degrees. The load control is marked from 0 to 10. I'm going to start the load control at 0, probably advance it to 2, maybe the next time 3 or 4, and then ultimately get close to 5 because I, I believe that's about where it's going to end up being when the amplifier is properly tuned for maximum output. I'm not tuning for the dip. The dip may be an indication of being close to the point where I want to be, but I want to couple all that RF to the antenna, in this case a dummy load. I don't want it stuck in the tank circuit finding a way to arc and destroy parts. So I'm going to advance the load control in anticipation each of where I think it should be each time I tune. And again it'll probably be 10 watts, 30 watts, 60 watts, 90, 100 watts in that neighborhood. The amplifier can take 100 watts of drive. When I get to that point where I've got everything tuned, I've got 100 watts going into it, I figured out where the best position is for the load control and the plate control for maximum output, then I'll probably advance the load control just a bit. As I said, it's marked from 0 to 10, 
in 180 degrees uh, rotation, I'll probably advance it about a quarter of an inch or maybe from, let's say it's it's resonant at five, I might advance it to five and a half. Or if it's resonant at four and a half, I might advance it to five. I just want the amplifier loaded too heavily. That will decrease the grid current. Uh, I might lose a little bit of efficiency, but I'm less likely to damage those tubes and the amplifier will be linear doing all that. Okay, let's go give that a shot <laughs> yet again. And if you have any questions, post it below. Um, my procedure will work with any triode amplifier, uh, A11As, 572Bs, 3500Zs, um, 3CX8, let's see, 3CX800s, um, those that should work. In a lot of cases, it doesn't agree with what the instruction manual says. But trust me, you want to load the amplifier as heavily as you can uh, to save those tubes and to be linear. So in essence, what I'm doing is I'm loading the amplifier as if I'm putting 120 watts into it, even though I may be doing 100. That way I know through its full swing of current and voltage, it's going to be linear. There's not going to be any distortion of that waveform. All right, it'll take just a couple of minutes to tune the amp. It's worth watching it. Um, it's an amplifier I haven't used much in the past and recently got it back. So here we go, a pair of 3500Zs and a Drake L4B, and I'm gonna load it for a max out very, very carefully and quickly for that matter. I don't wanna, it doesn't make sense to go key down and damage some parts in the amp because it's out of resonance. So I will just hit, hit the thing with 30, 40, 60 watts of drive, whatever it is, and then let up on it. So I'm just going to hit it long enough to turn the knob, figure out where it belongs, and then up. Uh, that should take 5 to 10 seconds. All right, enough talking. <laughs> Let's go give it a try and see if this time I can make some sense of uh, how to tune the amplifier. Here we go. All right, the amp is warmed up. Uh, it's been on for a couple of minutes. Tubes are certainly up to temperature. Going to move the uh, multifunction knob, the meter knob, from plate voltage, it's 2600 volts, to uh, the 300 watt scale and tune for max output with about 10 watts of drive. And I'm getting uh, about 200 watts output. And checking the grid current, it's well within limits at, at about 80 milliamps. Maximum grid current's about 240. All right, put the meter to the 3,000 watt scale, and I'm going to increase the drive a bit. And that's max output of about four to 500 watts. And grid current about 150. Okay, you're going to push the drive to about 60 watts. Put the wattmeter 3000 and getting about 800 watts, 800 to 900 watts out. Grid current's about 150, 60 milliamps. Uh, plate current's about, be about uh, 550. Right, Going to increase the uh, load control and uh, push the drive up to 100 watts. And here we go. Okay, peak output's about just shy of 1200 watts. Almost 800 milliamps, just shy of 1200 watts. Grid current's about 220, play current's almost 800. So that's that amplifier is tuned and uh, ready to go on the air with one slight change, and I would increase the load control just a tad. There we go. All right, very good. That amplifier is really well tuned. Okay, about 2,300 volts times 800 mils. 1150 divided by 1840 or so. Right on 62.5% efficiency. So that's 
right at where I want to be. Excellent. 